take a look at this. So how I picked one that's a little bit harder. The other ones are quite a bit easier. This is one of the harder ones on the assignment. Now, how would we go about simplifying something like that? There's yeah, there's a bunch of ways you could do this, but let's talk about you know maybe a way to approach all of these that would be pretty simple. So my suggestion is, and you can do you can do this other ways if you prefer, but my suggestion would be let's simplify this thing horizontally first, and then we'll simplify it vertically. So let's multiply across, let's multiply the tops, you know, multiply these fractions, you get one fraction and then simplify that. So in the first case, what are we going to get here if I do that? I'm not going to combine these numbers though. I want to leave them as factors so that we can trim this down more easily. So we're going to end up getting on the top, I'm going to get negative 3 times 13, right? Those are the numbers I'm going to multiply. What about the x's? x to the 0 times x to the negative 10. Now, what's my property when I multiply like bases? What do I do to the exponents? Add them, Add them up. So that's going to be x to what then? Negative 10. Negative 10. 0 plus negative 10 is negative 10. OK, what about the y's? I get y to the negative 8 times y to the negative 5. That's y to the negative 13. Negative 8 plus negative 5 is negative 13. Right? Let's go to the bottom. On the bottom, I'm going to get 78 times 9. Well, let's arrange those so the 9 matches up with the 3. Okay. And the 78 matches up with the 13 vertically, because we can simplify both of those. We'll get to that later. That's the hardest part is the number part, guaranteed. The, the variables are much easier to deal with. What about the x's? I get x cubed times x to the fifth. That's x to what? to the 8, you're right, x to the 8. Okay, what about the y's? I get y to the negative 9 times y to the 6. Y to the negative 3. Okay, let's get all the phones and stuff away, please. I don't want to see anybody on any phones. Put those all away, completely away. Okay, thanks. Okay, now we've, we've simplified horizontally. Now let's simplify vertically. Because look how we can do this. We're just going to line up all of the like bases, and then the numbers we'll, we'll deal with separately. Okay, negative 3 over 9 simplifies, doesn't it? Negative 3 over 9 simplifies to what? Yeah, I'm going to get a negative 1 on the top and a 3 on the bottom, right? 13 over 78 actually simplifies too. That's just 1 over 6. Okay, so now if I multiply straight across, on the top I'm just going to get a negative 1, okay, which I'll just write as a negative sign times whatever else we get up there. On the bottom, 3 times 6 is 18. So the number part is a negative 1. We'll write the 1 for now. We can always get rid of it later. Negative 1 over 18. What about the x's? What's my rule for dividing like bases? Subtract. Okay, I subtract. Now, in this case, remember, I gave you guys a better way to do this than the book does. What do we say about this? Where's the x going to stay in this case? The bottom. It's going to stay on the bottom, right? How come? Because if it's higher. Good. We keep the base where it has the most power. So it stays on the bottom, and I subtract the other exponent from it, right? So I get x to the what power on the bottom? What power? 18? How'd you get that? 8 minus negative 10 is 8 plus 10, right? Okay, so I get x to the 18, right? What about the y's? Where's the y going to stay? Bottom. Because negative 3 is bigger than negative 13, right? So on the bottom, I get y to the negative 3 minus negative 13 <clears throat> is plus 13, so y to the 10. So that's my answer. Right there, I'm done. Okay, I get negative 1 over 18, x to the 18th, y to the 10th. Done. Okay, make sense? Okay, that's a pretty hard one from that assignment. Let's look at, how about one of the limit ones? You had a bunch of them like this. Let's say we had, how do those go? Let's see, I'll pull one up.
Okay, one of these. Okay, something like that. So they give us this polynomial function, right? Just a sum of a bunch of, remember what a polynomial is? Just a bunch of terms added up. Each term has a power of x. The exponent has to be a whole number. And the coefficient, the number being multiplied by x, could be any real number. Just can't be enough, right? They want us to take the limit of this as x approaches negative infinity. So we're going to go clear out on the x-axis, super far to the left, and we want to know what's the behavior here. What's the function going to do? We know that it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to approach positive infinity or negative infinity, right? Which one is it going to be? Well, we know the answer is going to be some kind of infinity. The question is just which one, right? So to do that, all we have to do is look at the sign of the leading term. The leading term is negative x to the fourth. Right? So what is the sign of negative x to the fourth going to be when x approaches negative infinity? So x is going to be a negative number. What does that make that sign? A negative number to an even power is what? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. So I'm going to get negative 1 times a positive number is what? Negative or positive? Positive. positive. No. Negative. No, no, negative. Right, because I'm going to get two parts of that. I'm going to get the coefficient. I'm going to get the negative 1 <clears throat> times x to the fourth. If x is a negative number, this one's going to be a negative number. This one's going to be a positive number. See what I'm getting at? If I want to know what's the sign of that first term, it's got to be negative. The negative number to the fourth is positive, but multiplied by negative 1 makes it negative. You see? You're always just looking at the sign of the first term. So I have a negative value of x. What's the sign of that first term going to be? Negative, so the answer is negative infinity. That's it. Okay. Really, those are, those are probably the easiest ones you'll see on the test for those. So we would just end with infinity. Negative infinity. So you would do, on Moodle, you'd pull up the little, you know, there's a little symbol for infinity. Okay? All right, so... One more from the other assignment. Okay, what about these? Okay, what about this? Evaluate the polynomial function. So they give us a polynomial. Remember what this means. This doesn't mean f times 2. It means f of 2. It means we're plugging 2 in for x, right? So what are our ways we could do this? Well, you could just replace all the x's with 2's. Okay, but I gave you a shortcut. Remember it. It's the little bracket. Okay, remember how we did that? Oh, I remember that. Synthetic substitution, right? So remember this little bit? What we said, there's, there's, a, there's an easier way to do these problems. And even if you think, ah, it's okay, I'll just, I'll just do it the old-fashioned way, don't. Because in about a week, we're going to be using this bracket again for something much more important. So you've got to know how to do it anyway. Might as well learn now, because it does make these a little bit simpler. Okay, so how did I do this? Let's re re kind of rehash the steps here for doing synthetic substitution. I put some numbers here. Put all the coefficients up here of what? Of the, of the polynomial, right, the coefficients. So what are they going to be in order? Negative 
He's like, I gotta put the polynomial in standard form first. So I gotta write it from biggest powers of x down to lowest powers of x, which it is, right? Yeah, negative three. Okay, so the leading coefficient goes first, that's negative three. What's next? Three. Negative three. Yeah. Now what? Negative, negative eight. Ten. Positive ten. Negative. negative ten. Okay, now what if, what if it didn't happen this time? Oh, you know what? That's not right. There's something wrong with that. No, there's something else wrong. I'll give you a hint. Hint. I gotta go all the way back up to here. What do you notice about that polynomial? Ah, how come? Very good. How come? Yeah. Okay, because it's missing an x cubed term. So what must be multiplied by x cubed if it's not there? Zero. The coefficient has to be zero. We have to put even the zero coefficients in there. So we gotta put a zero in. So there's the negative three, there's the negative three, there's the negative eight, Gosh, negative, there's my, oh, positive 10, sorry, there's my positive 10, there's my negative 10. And then remember that my answer box goes there, doesn't it? Right? What number goes out front? Two. Two. Good. The number that goes out front is the number that I'm plugging in for x. And then the little trick we played, now we just played this little synthetic game where we pull down the first coefficient to start the game, right? So that becomes a negative 3. Anytime a number appeared below the bracket, what did we do? Yeah, we multiplied it by the number out front. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And then that's the number that we pushed up into the next column and added. So what did we get? Negative nine. Negative nine times two. Negative two. Plus zero. Negative. Negative. Times two. Okay. Plus negative eight. Forty-four. Negative forty-four. Good. Times two. Plus 10 times 2. Negative 156. Good. Negative 156. And so what's my answer? <laughs> if I add those up, I get negative 166. So that's the answer. That's the value of the function when x equals 2. Okay? That's all we did before spring break. That was it. Those three things really sums it all up. Okay, so so now what I'd like to look at is something really simple. Okay, this is it. I want to look at how we add and put the phones away again. Put those phones away, please. So uh, I want to look at how we do arithmetic with polynomials. Really simple stuff. This is stuff that all is exactly the way you would expect it to be. I want to show you a couple of ways to organize what you're doing, though. It'll make it easier. We're not going to look at division. That's a little tougher. But adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials is not a big deal. Okay, adding polynomials, is, all you do is we just combine like terms. That is it. So for example, if I want to add these two polynomials up, if I'm going to add, let's add them vertically. There's two ways we could do this, horizontally and vertically. I think vertically is a pretty good way to do it. If we add them up vertically, the only trick you got to remember is you want to keep a column for every power of x. That's crucial. If you do that, it gets really simple. Then all I do is I'm just going to line up, when I add these two polynomials up, I just line up the like terms vertically and add vertically. It's really simple. right? So we end up with negative 7, whoops. Negative 7 plus 8 would just give us our negative 1, right? Negative x, there's only one of them, so that just stays a negative x. Positive 2x squared minus 10x squared is negative 8x squared. 3x cubed plus 1x cubed is 4x cubed. That's it. Very simple. 
You can add these up horizontally also to show you, but I think you'll see that it's just a little bit tougher or it's a little bit more confusing, but not much. And you really could almost just take your pick. If I wanted to add these up horizontally, I would probably just say, okay, I'm going to, where are my x cubes? I've got 3x cubed plus x cubed is 4x cubed, and I'll cross those off. Uh, 2x squared minus 10x squared is negative 8x squared. Cross them off. There's only one x term. Cross it off. Negative 7 plus 8 minus 1. I crossed them all off. That's what I'm left with. Right? No big deal. Okay. okay, what do you do if... Don't look at this. I don't like the way they do this. It's a little crazy. Okay, if you're going to subtract polynomials, you can subtract them vertically. That's fine. You know, same way we did before, only subtracting vertically instead of adding. Or the other thing I would suggest you do that makes it really simple is just distribute the negative sign all the way through and add them. That's it. That's all we'd have to do in this case. We, won't, we don't even have to necessarily do the problem. This one, I don't even need those parentheses because there's a 1 in front, right? Distributing it doesn't change anything. So I just end up with 8x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 9. But over here, if I distribute that negative sign all the way through, what do I get? Negative 2x cubed. Negative 2x cubed. So we'll put that right there. Minus 6x squared, right? Plus x. Everybody agree? Yeah. Minus 1. Add them up vertically and you're done. Okay? No big deal. Piece of cake. Questions so far? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that too. That's the same thing we just did. Okay, multiplying. Multiplying. This is also all the multiplying means is just distributing. You've done this in the past by foiling. Remember we said at the beginning of the year and I showed you when we when we foil stuff out, it's really just distributing. That's all you're gonna do here. So let, let's take a look at this one. Uh, first, we'll look at this horizontally, and then we'll look at it vertically. If you want to have small, if you have small products like this, horizontally is fine. If you have really big products, I would, I would use the vertical method. Okay, so what about this? I'm going to suggest that you always want to distribute from the smaller polynomial, meaning fewer terms. So from x minus 3, that's only got two terms, to the bigger one. You tell me what we get. If I distribute each of these two terms, if I distribute the x... What do I get? x times negative x squared would be x times 2x. Good. x times 4. Plus 4x. Okay, now let's distribute, including the sign, we have to distribute the negative 3, not just the 3, it's the negative 3. Negative 3x times negative x squared is what? 3x squared. So where am I going to put that, you suppose? Underneath, Underneath the 2x squared. Underneath the 2x squared, because I want to add up the like terms, right? So we've got a positive 3x squared. Negative 3 times positive 2x. Negative 6x. Negative 6x. So you can see why it's important to keep a column for every power of x, can't you? Even if there's one missing in the first one, there may, it may not be missing in the second one, right? You always want to keep those positions, keep those columns open. Negative 3 times positive 4? Negative 12. And all we do now is add them up vertically. So we're done. Right? Escape. Okay? What about vertically? Vertically, this is how you, back in the day, way back in the day when you started multiplying big numbers, multi-digit numbers together, this is all you did. Right? You used long multiplication. Same thing here. We're just going to stack up the, the polynomials vertically, keeping columns for every power of x, and then we're just going to distribute like so. First, we're going to distribute negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. 
Then we get negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. We're just going to add a rule right here. Negative 3 times negative x squared is our positive 3x squared. Now distribute the x through and stack them up just like we did before. x times 4 is 4x, so it lines up in the x column. x times 2x is 2x squared, so it goes in the x squared column. x times negative x squared is negative x cubed, so we start an x cubed column. Add them up vertically, and we got it. Right? That's it. Okay? No big deal. Almost. Okay, a little more to do. Okay, what would we do here? Would you need to take the first two, distribute, and then just do it, take the product, and then do the same thing with the last one? Exactly. Good. Remember, when you multiply more than one thing together, you have to multiply in pairs. So we would have to take, for example, the first two by themselves, get an answer first, right? Foil those out. Okay, so if I multiply the first two out, if I combine like terms, I just get that, right? Now I'd have to do the same thing we just did, right? We'd have to multiply that first polynomial by the second one, and that's going to give us, you know, a bigger product. But we have to do it in two pieces, two steps. Okay, there is sometimes a shortcut we can take, though. I want to show you this shortcut. Okay, this is the last step we're going to, last step we're going to go through, are these expansion patterns. This one you already know from Chapter 5. This is just the reverse of, remember we factored by using a difference of squares pattern? Uh, you know, if, if that wasn't really familiar last chapter, we're going to do more of that this chapter. So this is one that's just going to be a freebie. We know that if I start this way with a squared minus b squared, we're going to learn, we already did, we'll remind ourselves that that always factors into a plus b times a minus b. Well, it works in reverse also. Okay. These are the ones I really want to show you. That's a really simple one that you're just going to get. But these are a little bit tougher. Okay. So here's, here's a pattern for squaring a binomial. Now think how we had to do this in Chapter 5. In Chapter 5, when you got problems like this on the test, you had to write out a plus b times a plus b and boil them out and combine like terms. Okay. We don't have to do that anymore. There's a pattern that always works. If I square the binomial, and by just means two, right? So we get a polynomial with two terms as a binomial. I always get this pattern. A plus B quantity squared is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Okay? I'm going to show you a little trick here. You don't even need this bottom one. You don't even need the minus version. All you do, is, isn't A minus B the same as A plus negative B? Right, so if I'm if I'm expanding out something minus something, I just it's something plus negative something. Right? You can use that that top pattern the whole time. You don't even need this one. Not important. Okay, so there's one pattern we're gonna practice. Here's the other one. Okay, we also know that if I cube a binomial, I get this pattern. Okay. So a plus b quantity cubed is just a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. You're probably thinking, where in the world is that come from? You, know, you can just remember it, sure. But there is a really simple way to come up with these patterns that I want to show you. So if you ever forget them, it's really easy to recreate them. Here's how it works. Okay, these come from something called Pascal's triangle. Now, Pascal's triangle, it's a really simple shape to build. All it is is this. It's just going to be... We're going to start with the first row, we'll just label these. The first row is going to be the row for, the row number is going to be zero to start with. And then we'll just add up one, two, three, etc. So for n equals one, every time we get to a new row, we're just going to add one more number on that row. But the rule is this, the outside numbers on the triangle always have to be ones. So the next row is pretty boring, it just looks like one and one. Okay, but we get down to n equals 3, or n equals 2, sorry. Now I've got a 1 there and a 1 there, because the outside, outside numbers are always 1s, but the inside numbers are always built by adding up the two numbers above. So what's that one going to be? It's going to be a 2. Good. Okay, so when n equals 3, 
we're going to get 1 and 1. And what are, what's this number going to be? 3. 3. What's this number going to be? 3. Okay. Do a couple more rows, and then I'll, I'll explain what these rows mean, how they relate to what we were just doing. So what, what's this number going to be? 4. 4. This one? 6. Okay, let's do one more. So I'm going to get a one there, one there. What's there? Five. Okay, here's what those mean. Those are the coefficients in binomial expansions. So if we go back now, now think what we did just a second ago. We said that if we wanted to expand out a plus b squared, what was the pattern? The pattern was 1a squared plus 2ab plus 1b squared, right? Remember? So, so how do we get that? Really simple. All you do is whatever this exponent is, whatever power you're taking the binomial to, notice that corresponds to the, the row number, the exponents always have to add up to that. So we're going to start off with all of the exponents weighted towards the a term. So we're going to get all, a gets all the power, 2. Now we're gradually going to ratchet the a down and the b up, one step at a time. So, so the middle one, a is going to drop down to a to the 1 times b to the 1. And then the last one is just going to be b squared. Okay, see how that works? So remember the pattern we had for, for a plus b cubed? Well, the coefficients were 1, 3, 3, 1. We get it from Pascal's triangle. And what are the what are each term get what's the, each term gonna be? We're gonna get 1 times a cubed, right? Because 3 is in this time. Plus 3a squared. A goes down by 1. B goes up by 1, so B to the 1, plus 3, A to the 1, B squared, plus 1, B cubed, right? Are you seeing the pattern? Yep. Okay, now this, think how much easier this is. Doing this, the alternative is, if I wanted to cube out A plus B, I got to do a plus B times A plus B, boil it out, simplify, then distribute through another A plus B. Add up all the like terms, that is so much quicker, right? Knowing this pattern. This is a lot, I mean, this is probably half an hour quicker to do this one. This term, this one down here, this is the expansion for A plus B to the fifth. So, it's, I mean, it's the same pattern. It's one times A to what power? Fifth plus 5 times a to the b to the 1 plus 10 a cubed b squared, right? Plus 10 a squared b cubed. A's are going down, b's are going up. Plus 5 a to the 1 b to the 4th plus 1 b to the 5th. Okay? So, so why is this so useful? Well, here's, let's look at why this is so useful. And honestly, all you really have to do, I mean, the, 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 the least thing you could do here and get by would just be to remember those few patterns. But, you know, this takes you further than that. You could do bigger problems using that little trick than what you're probably going to get in this chapter. But eventually you're going to get them, so it's nice to know. All right, so what do we do with this? Okay, what about this? What if I want to cube out x plus 5? Instead of having to multiply x plus 5 times x plus 5 times x plus 5, the whole long process, we can just follow our pattern. Remember, our pattern is just, what was it again? See if you can tell me. A plus b cubed expands to what? So 1a cubed plus a squared b plus a plus b cubed. Well, what's our a and what's our b this time? a is x, b is 5. We're just going to follow that pattern. That's it, right? 
So then don't we just get a cubed is going to be x cubed. 3 times a squared times b is 3 times x squared times 5, right? Plus 3 times x is a. b is 5, so 5 squared plus 5 cubed. So what is 3 times x squared times 5? 15x squared, right? 3 times x times 5 squared. Isn't 5 squared 25? 25 times 3 is just 75 times x. And then 5 cubed is 125. That is so much quicker, right? Way quicker. OK? What about, I want to show you how real quickly here how you could do, oh, I should have left that up. I will leave that up. There it is. OK, what if we want to do this? What if we want to do? Okay, what about that one? So that's that's the same thing, isn't it? Now this time, what's our what's our a and what's our b? Okay, so a is two x. What's our b? Negative three. Negative three. Everybody agree? Yeah. So I'm just adding negative three. So this is going to be a cubed is just going to be two x cubed, right? Plus three times two x squared times negative three. Good plus 3 times 2x times negative 3 squared, right? Plus negative 3 cubed. So what are those? Well, what is the quantity 2x cubed? What's my property of exponents there? What do I do if I have a product to a power? No, no I, I distribute to both parts. So I get a 2 cubed, which is 8. eight times x cubed, right, plus, now, three, what's 2x squared? 4x four four x squared, so I get 3 times 4x squared times negative 3. What's that all multiply to? 3 times 4 is 12 times negative 3? Negative, negative 36. So negative 36x squared. What about here? I'm going to get 3 times 2x is 6x times negative 3 squared is what? 9. nine. So 9 times 6x would be 54x. And then negative 3 cubed is just negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 times negative 3. What is that? <laughs> negative 27. Okay. All right? Isn't that quicker? Seriously, is that not way quicker? Yeah. And just imagine. Now, seriously, imagine if you had to. What if you? What if I had two x minus three to the fifth? That would really suck to do that the long way. I mean, it would take. You'd have that'd be a long, drawn out process. You'd have to distribute and simplify four times to get that answer. Every time would be a worse polynomial answer, right? But you could do it just in one step if you follow that pattern, expansion pattern. Okay, make sense? Yeah. All right, do we have any time? We have about four minutes left.